Good evening, my name is Aaron Muloisi. What will it take for South Africa to achieve sustained economic growth while creating more jobs? Special Assignment recently had an opportunity to visit South Korea, a country which only about six decades ago was poverty-stricken and war-ravaged. South Korea is now counted as one of the world's 11 largest economies and a global leader in information technology. Experts say this achievement was due to their discipline and sacrifice. Do we have similar levels of discipline as the South Koreans? This report by Kuobas van Staden. A hot afternoon in a flat economy. South Africans agree that we need money, we need jobs, we need a growing economy. So how do you grow an economy? What are our options and what will be the price? Economists tell the story of two countries. In 1957, Ghana and South Korea were equally poor. Their total wealth broke down to just $300 per person. This is Ghana today. In 60 years, its GDP per person has about doubled to just more than $600. This is South Korea. Its GDP is more than $28,000 per person. So how did they do it? And what can South Africa learn? We recently got a chance to visit South Korea, so we decided to ask them. In the late 1950s, South Korea was emerging from two wars and decades of colonization. Making use of American aid, South Korea basically turned itself into a massive factory. Now, 60 years later, many of these hardcore factory jobs have moved to China. Meanwhile, South Korea has reinvented itself as an economy of engineering, design and communications. But how did they do it? Human resources is education. They spend a lot. They spend lavishly for the education of their children. They sacrifice everything. They don't buy expensive items, but they are willing to spend money for the education of the kids. Today, these kids are on a school trip to Seoul's Imperial Palace. But from middle school, they will have about double the school hours than South African children. After a day at school, their parents will send them to extra practice lessons. By the time they're 15, their school day will sometimes stretch past midnight. But what about South African kids? Economists like Azar Jamin say South Africa's problem is not education spending. It's been a fascinating true, that's true. Uh, the proportionate amount that South Africa's government spends on education relative to its annual budget is one of the highest in the world. But clearly, it is not achieving what it was meant to do. And if you look at the breakdown of education by the government, you realize that uh, the lion's share is not devoted towards education as such, but rather towards social needs such as nutrition for the majority of students. That is, does not ensure that they improve their skills. We have a history of apartheid education. It will take generations, I think, not just one generation, probably two generations to sort that mess out. In fact, by some indicators, things are getting worse, not necessarily better. So what we have is probably 10% of pupils coming out of the formal schooling system who are reasonably well equipped to operate in the modern economy. The recent teachers' strike just before the matric exams made many South Africans wonder where our priorities really lie. Meanwhile, the whole of South Korea takes part in its high school exam. Streets around schools are closed so that the kids are not distracted by Seoul's constant traffic. When you speak to economists, the South Korean work ethic comes up all the time. We got an even clearer picture when we spoke to a South African living in Seoul. It's different, they. It's as if they can work longer hours, but physically we can work harder. So maybe we can learn a little bit like working longer hours and not complaining about lunch breaks or holidays, because I, I work at a private institution and I think we're gonna have three days off 
like the whole year. And that's a bonus and I have to be happy about that. Whereas to any other South African in South Africa will just not stand for that. Kotra is a body promoting Korean investment in other countries. We spoke to Yong Su Kang about his time in South Africa trying to promote economic ties. He says South Africans were relaxed, but he wasn't. I take one example, the perception of time. Korean, we are busy, very busy. We hurry up all the time, particularly at work, while the South African enjoy relax at work. So, and uh, the time perception uh, it was uh, very, very uh, critical sometimes. Why? Uh, when uh, I receive a uh, business delegation from Korea, I should make a program for them. Then I should contact uh, some appropriate counterpart. But uh, they do not give me uh, the accurate time. Then in that case, I can't uh, uh, make a program. I cannot uh, reply to Korea. Yeah. So this one, just we can say that is a small issue. But uh, when we have to make a program, we have to do something, uh, everything will be delayed. That, that was uh, very, very stressful for me uh, to work uh, in South Africa. After the break, the power of the World Cup. Dave and Dolores asked real insurance clients on the streets of South Africa how they felt about being part of the insurance family. Are you with our children? Yes, we're with them. Ah, we are all one family, no? We're one family. <laughs> are you happy with them, my children? Absolutely yeah. happy. How long have you been with them? No, plus maybe six years. Six years, wow. Mm. If you haven't claimed, then that means you got something out, no? Mm. Did you get an out bonus? Yeah, I this did. is how you could afford this too, no? Yes. Yeah, exactly. To become a part yeah. of the insurance family, call 0800 60,000 now. Tony Ferguson, I lost 2.6 kilos in the first week and 14 overall. It was so easy and I never went hungry. Tony's food tastes great. There's such a variety to choose from. Developed by pharmacist Tony Ferguson, the program is based on sound nutrition. I've lost 4.6 kilos in my first week. And Byron lost 5.4 kilos in his first week. The Tony Ferguson girls at Discam are fantastic. They show you how to lose weight and keep it off. Available at participating Discam pharmacies. My fellow germs, we were under the impression that all bleaches are equal, but look at this. We tested thick Domestos bleach against thin bleach. Even a bottle of thin bleach cannot kill all the germs, yet just a little thick Domestos goes further, killing all known germs. Unbelievable. Any questions? Hmm? <laughs> New thicker Domestos kills the germs others leave behind. We think luxury doesn't just lie in looking good. It's rather a seamless blend of elegance and purpose. Introducing the all-new Sonata. Guys claim to have sensitive skin. Guys can suffer from irritation. Even more so when it comes to shaving. That's why there's Gillette Fusion, the number one razor recommended by US dermatologists. Fusion's smoothing microfins gently level the uneven surface of the skin, allowing the five blades to shave comfortably. Gillette Fusion Cool White. Try Gillette Series Pure and Sensitive Shave Gel for protection against skin irritation. Gillette. 
know Milo cereal is made with whole grain and is a source of fiber. It's also packed full of Milo energy. And when you put yourself in your kids' shoes, you can see why they need it. Milo cereal, with that great Milo taste we've loved for generations. Plus, it's made with whole grain, is a source of fiber, and the energy your kids need. Meet the Spherix. They were the 2002 World Cup mascots. Similar to 2010, Korea's co-hosting the World Cup with Japan in 2002 was a way to symbolically move ahead in the world community. And similar to South Africa, it left them wondering how to use their 10 brand new stadiums. Uh,市民的一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一
we repay our international debts. The Korean population lined up at jewelry stores to literally hock their gold jewelry so that the state could pay off debts. I cannot imagine that taking place in South Africa, which is not necessarily a negative commentary, but it is a commentary about how different the society is. If one looks at patriotism in South Africa, I believe it exists. There is a latent patriotism within the country, uh, but you do have uh, to have a government that takes advantage of patriotism, not for the sake of enriching itself and its own cadres, but enriching the people at large. And to some extent, we saw the manifestation of the potential success of that patriotism in the preparations for the FIFA World Cup. But the reason why South Africa succeeded so well was because there was an outside agency that exploited that patriotism. And that outside agency, uh, which effectively ruled South Africa for a couple of years, was FIFA itself. This link between patriotism and the economy extends to how Korean people feel about Korean companies. We are so much proud of having Samsung Electronics, LG Electronics. Try to imagine a South African saying how proud they are of a South African company. Difficult, isn't it? Yes, theoretically, there's no doubt that South Africa's large corporations should have been playing the role that many of your uh, cables in South Korea played in terms of harnessing the people's support behind them to develop the country's uh, social requirements at large. However, many South African businesses can be faulted for being very skeptical about the long-term future of the South African economy and instead their focus has turned towards foreign investment by themselves rather than developing the country's resources internally. After the break, the future Korean style. We all hear stories of bad things that happen to good people. And somehow we think, those things will never happen to me. But deep down, we know the what-ifs. What if the burn isn't just the curry or a serious illness strikes? These are not easy issues to address, but only when we do can we sleep easy. With Lifestyle Protector, we cover you for disability, critical illness, and life. Speak to a knowledgeable Liberty Advisor who'll help you manage Manage the things that matter most in your life. Liberty. Own your life. I can't believe that people are actually paying me to travel across the world and collect new influences, build new sounds with different artists. And it drops right here. I created the Affordable Art Fair to make great art accessible to everyone. Cheese. I write, publish, design, and organize events. It's perfect. The BlackBerry Torch makes it simple because I'm always staying in touch with everybody. All my crew, my tour manager. Is that BlackBerry? I'm always using the Twitter or the Facebook apps. My BlackBerry Torch is like my portable gallery because I can easily go between artists' websites and I can share pictures of art on BlackBerry Messenger really cool. or in person. I can update my eco-fashion blog anywhere. And the new music player makes it easy to find something to match my mood. I love what I do. I love what I do. I love all my loves, and my BlackBerry Torch helps me do them. They are married. They work together. I know where we can find 75 million pieces of gold. 75 million? And they're after 75 million pieces of gold. Just not the gold he was expecting. You know about all this? New Magnum Gold. Rich vanilla ice cream swirled with delicious caramel sauce dipped in golden milk chocolate. You know about all this. New Magnum Gold. As good as gold. Mums always need to be ready to come up with something good. That's why I trust new fresh ideas from Knorr. What's for dinner, Mum? I simply add mince and soon I have a freshly baked and delicious lasagna. 
These new recipes have no added preservatives, no artificial colorants, and reduced salt. So no matter what, my family can look forward to a great tasting meal from Knorr. Knorr lasagna mates. Can I have some more? New great taste, better for you. No, 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 he's big! Oh. Hey, Gunther, M. Webb are offering uncapped ADSL from 219 rand per month. <laughs> Maybe someone will watch this ridiculous art house film you're making. <laughs> Feel the kudu in you. <laughs> now with this, you get the whole nine yards. All of the ding, 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 and the... That's the whistles. I hear you asking about that kitchen sink. Of course, man, you get that too. In fact, you get the whole enchilada. It's zonk, it's zwap, Joe. It's all that and a bag of slab chips. It's the full Monty, fuller than full house. Lock, stock and barrel. It's like having the whole milk there and the cow. Get everything you've ever wanted from a bank account with Nedbank Savvy. SMS us today and we'll make things happen. South Korea made a massive manufacturing jump in the 1960s and 70s. One of the reasons the development happened so fast was that it was planned and implemented by the government. In our experience, we had a very strong leader in 1960s and 1970s. He led our economy and our society to develop economically and socially. And uh, uh, people also uh, respected his uh, leadership. So uh, your country also may need a very strong leadership to develop economy. We, the South Korea, was under authoritarian regime until 1980s so we were able to make quick jump from poverty to economic growth i think that's the reason one of the major reason we are able to make achievement economic achievement in terms of quantification and also qualification it's possible to make a certain growth under the authoritarian regime, like China. While this way of developing can have spectacular results, it has a price, and it doesn't work for everyone. If you have in mind an East, particularly a Northeast Asian style of developmental states, so Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, particularly those three, then you're probably looking at a pretty authoritarian model in homogeneous societies, which we certainly don't have, in which labor is repressed and they're very tight government business relations, but the bureaucracy is very strong and historically its role has always been accepted as a strong bureaucracy in society. Then you translate that into the South African context where I would say we have a um, a weak bureaucracy, by and large, um, with lots of capacity challenges. Just look at uh, local government, for instance. And the state's role in development is not necessarily widely shared or accepted. From an economic perspective, an authoritarian government makes everything simple. The government sets up an economic plan and implements it, without having to listen to unions or other critics. South Africa's labor unions are formidable opponents, much more vocal than South Korea in the 1960s or China today. But the government's central planning didn't just affect the unions. There's a famous story about General Park, the military dictator. One of the first things he did when he assumed office was to bring all the captains of industry into his room and say, 
we're going to pursue a patriotic industrialization program, and if you oppose me, I will lock you up. So it wasn't just the labor unions that were the target of this, it was also the business leaders who were then co-opted into the process. It's very difficult to imagine that kind of discussion taking place in South Africa now. I can imagine President Zuma calling captains of industry into his room and saying, if you don't invest, I'm going to lock you up. I think they would laugh him out of the room, which is a good thing because we, we have a democratic society. So that's, I think, a fundamental difference to South Korea and other East Asian tigers in the 50s and 60s. But of course, in the 50s and 60s, South Africa had its own authoritarian government, practicing its own central planning. I think the parallel is a good one. Um, the apartheid labor force is characterized by wage repression, apartheid spatial planning, all of that that went along with it. And so, industrialization on the basis of relatively cheap manufacturing was possible in that period. And that's the problem. An authoritarian government might leave you with a good rail system, but South Africans know it also leaves you with lots and lots and lots of problems. Which brings us to the final lesson. But at this rate of progress, by 1955... Attending a product demonstration in South Korea can be a jaw-dropping experience. The Korean tech company SK has a few ideas about how we will decorate our houses in the future. This is part of a push into IT that has made South Korea a leader in the worldwide knowledge economy. <laughs> South Korean companies like SK, LG and Samsung are determining how we will make calls, watch movies and wear clothes in the future. Just <laughs> possible to make a certain growth under the authoritarian regime like China, but at some point it's impossible to, to, uh, to, to jump, you know. Uh, so because of the, the uh, democratization, and also the, the freedom of speech, we are, not, we are able to enter into knowledge-based economy from small stack industry. North of the border, North Korea can still throw a party when it wants to, but daily life in North Korea is marked by famine and underdevelopment. The strength of the, the contemporary Korea is with knowledge-based economy. I mean, do you think, do you foresee North Korea will be able to uh, develop information technology or internet-based economy, knowledge-based economy? It's impossible. It's possible for North Korea to be able to develop, like, tank or shipbuilding. That might be possible, but I think it's impossible for closed society to develop knowledge-based economy, like what we have achieved in South Korea. While many North Koreans have never seen a color TV, South Korea has some of the fastest internet speeds in the world. Now the government is implementing an even faster internet network. On this network, you will be able to download a full 90-minute movie in 12 seconds. How do I do it? Just slightly drive into the small walls. Oh, sure. There we go. <laughs> Whatever lesson we learn from South Korea, it's probably a good idea to learn it fast. We have serious pressures building in our political system, and I think that these are well known. The pressures associated with populism, with a large spectrum of the population being unskilled, unemployed, young, and wanting the fruits of freedom. 
and that creates a serious political tension in our political system. We have to resolve these issues. Um, how they will be resolved will be critical, I think, to our future. Well, that's it for tonight. Join us.